I work with people who have multiple sclerosis and learn that their symptoms are exacerbated by poor power quality, also known as dirty electricity. Dirty electricity is generated by various devices in the home, including computers, compact fluorescent light bulbs, plasma TVs and smart meters. It can also enter the home from neighbors who use these devices or from nearby wind turbines and poorly maintained power lines. Dirty electricity can be measured with a scope meter or a microsurge meter. One gives a waveform, the other gives a number in GS units. Compact fluorescent light bulbs and plasma TVs generate radio frequencies. These waveforms flow into your electrical wiring and corrupt your power supply. This is called dirty electricity. By practicing good electromagnetic hygiene, and by reducing exposure to dirty electricity, some people with multiple sclerosis can find relief for their symptoms as shown in these videos. This is a video of a 27-year-old male diagnosed with primary progressive multiple sclerosis two years earlier. He normally walks with a cane. Dirty electricity in his home was between 135 and 410 GS units. Ideally, it should be below 40. The video on the left was taken at the beginning of the study. The video on the right was taken two weeks later. His symptoms reappear when he spends time away from home. This subject is a 40-year-old female who was diagnosed with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis 13 years earlier. Dirty electricity in her home was high due to a plasma TV. The video on the left was taken at the beginning of the study. The video on the right was taken six weeks later. Not everyone we tested improved after filters were installed in their homes. How many people with multiple sclerosis are also electrically hypersensitive? Could electrosmog play a role in relapsing, remitting MS? Could the absence of electrosmog delay, halt, or reverse the progression of this disease? What frequencies and devices are they responding to? Symptoms for multiple sclerosis and electrohypersensitivity are similar. These are the symptoms they have in common. We know that electrosmog affects the nervous system, and the nervous system is compromised in patients with multiple sclerosis. We know that electrosmog affects the immune system, and MS is believed to be an autoimmune disease. We know that electrosmog initiates a stress response, and that symptoms of MS worsen with stress. Electrosmog can be an irritant or toxin to those with MS. How many electrically hypersensitive patients are misdiagnosed with MS? Just as some people with multiple sclerosis are sensitive to the weather, some may be sensitive to electrosmog. While there is little we can do about the weather, we can reduce electrosmog in our immediate environment and we can practice good electromagnetic hygiene. Here are some suggestions.